My name is Juliana Nicolasian with the Oklahoma State University Library. Today is Wednesday, August 26, 2015, and we're in Stillwater, Oklahoma, interviewing Bruce Waterfield. Bruce is joining us today for our Cowboys in Every County Oral History Project, representing Morrison, Oklahoma, in Noble County. Bruce, thank you for joining us today. You bet. Well, let's learn a little bit more about you. Let's start with the year you were born and where you were born. Okay, I was born in 1962. I'm actually a Texan. You may not want to admit that, being uh, being an Oklahoman now, but uh, I feel like I am an Oklahoman now. So anyway, I was born in Canadian, Texas in 1962. Um, I don't know if you want me to go on about... Why don't you tell me a little bit about your, your parents? Okay. Uh, I go back a long way with OSU. My parents actually met here at OSU in 1957 at a thing called Dance Hour. Uh, it was a fraternity sorority function where they paired the men and women up and they made them dance together. So uh, yeah, my parents met at that and it's amazing how many people I've run into that either met at Dance Hour or knew what it was. Uh, you know, today's kids probably don't. I was in a fraternity as well and had no idea what it was. Uh, other than what my parents had told me. So, but yeah, my parents did meet here at OSU, so I guess I can say that I wouldn't be here if it weren't for OSU. So. And, and where are your parents originally from? Uh, my mother is originally a Kentuckian, and she followed her big brother here, who came here for vet school. Uh, he went on to be the track veterinarian for Churchill Downs in Louisville, uh, and my grandfather, their their father was actually racing secretary at Churchill Downs, so have quite a history in the horse racing business. My father, originally from Canadian Texas, I grew up on a ranch, uh, so he met my mother here at OSU and dragged her to Canadian Texas. So she really, she doesn't stay that much in touch with her Kentucky roots anymore. She considers herself to be uh, from Canadian Texas. What's sort of interesting now, all comes full circle, she will be moving here to, uh, to Stillwater at the end of this week, as a matter of fact. Uh, she's had some health issues and wants to be closer to family, so uh, we've actually built her a house here, and so she'll be moving to, moving to Stillwater. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned your family has a, a ranching background. Mm -hmm. um, now, when your, your father graduated from OSU mm -hmm. and they returned home to Texas, Correct. tell me a little bit about his work. Uh, he, my father was, was a rancher first and foremost, but he actually had a career in politics. He was a state representative from the Texas Panhandle. Uh, Canadian, I don't know if most people know, it's just right across the border from Oklahoma. So I always identified more really with Oklahoma. We would, if we needed to come to the big, big town, so to speak, we would come to Oklahoma City. So uh, anyway, he, but he was a state rep from the state of Texas. So my parents actually spent a good deal of time in Austin and I also did that as well. I moved to Austin, uh, spent about 20 years there. Uh, I'm an OSU sports junkie. Uh, so I always kind of had in the back of my mind that I might retire to Stillwater. And when I turned 50, I just up and did it. So uh, now I'm, uh, you know, even though I'm representing Noble County, I'm so close to Stillwater, I always say Stillwater. I guess I should say I'm from Morrison, which that is my post office mailing address. Uh, and I do live in Noble County, but. Uh, work for OSU and spend a lot of time in Stillwater. When you were a little boy growing up, did you split time between Canadian and Austin or? Uh, no, not so much. The, the politics came along uh, later in my dad's life. We actually owned a couple of businesses, businesses together in Austin. Uh, so I, I still consider Canadian Texas my home. I still go back there. I have a lot of relatives there. Uh, the family still has ranching interests there. So not really. I, I grew up uh, when I was little and lived in Canadian. We spent a lot of Saturdays coming to Stillwater. We came to football games. Uh, you know, I remember the old Lewis Field, of course, and just came to a lot of games. I think I was trying to figure out before this interview when I came to my first game, and I believe it was 1969. Hmm. Hate to admit that, but uh, so I've been coming to, to sporting events here in Stillwater for a really long time. So. How long of a drive uh, was that when you were younger? Three uh, three hours. Oddly enough, it's really not that huh. far. Uh, you know, there are places in Oklahoma that are further away than we were in Canadian Texas. It, if you get on Highway 51 and head west, you'll run into it. Uh, the number changes at the state line, but uh, it's just due west of Stillwater. Well, talk to me a little bit 
a little bit about your your schooling growing up, your elementary school. Mm -hmm. I had a had a pretty pretty typical uh, raising, I guess, in Canadian Texas. It's a small town mm -hmm. of about three thousand, uh, much like any small town in Oklahoma. Mostly ranching kids. Uh, there's a lot of oil and gas activity there, so there were a lot of you know a lot of maybe a bit more transient than most small towns, just because a, a lot of people come and go with the oil oil patch, but. Pretty typical raising, went to high school there in Canadian and graduated and came to OSU, which was sort of predetermined, I guess. Uh, I've counted, I think there have been 15 of us now that have come to OSU, counting the cousins and extended family. So it, OSU is definitely our school. And Canadian Texas is funny in that it's probably, OSU is probably the predominant school there. It would either be OSU or Texas Tech. A lot of the ag kids would either come to school here or would go to tech, but, but mainly here. So. Mm -hmm. so. so when you're younger and you're going to school, you have this connection to OSU at a young age. Yeah. You're attending the football games. Yeah. How, how are you showing your, your OSU spirit when, when you're that young? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It just happens organically, I guess. I mean, you come to a game, you get into it. Uh, it's exciting. You know, your parent. You know, your parents went to school here, and they wear all of the gear and cheer at games. And uh, I don't know. It just happens. Uh, and I guess that's why I'm such a huge OSU sports fan. And I will probably get into this later in the interview. But I do work for the OSU athletic department now, so uh, it's just always been a part of what I've done. Always. Mm -hmm. Siblings. I have one sister that did not come to OSU, one of the very few people in our family that did not. She went to a small school in Austin called St. Edwards. She's quite a bit younger than I am, so was uh, was raised more in Austin than I was when my dad was in politics. So she liked St. Edwards, uh, you know, she liked the smaller, the smaller aspect. She's always been an OSU fan. I mean, she's been to plenty of events here as well. And now that my mother's moving here, she'll be spending more time here as well. So she, it wouldn't surprise me if she didn't move here at some point as well. So. When you you were getting ready mm -hmm. to, to graduate from high school, did you have any idea of what you wanted to be when you got older? Uh, you know, I'm an ag major, so mm -hmm. yes, I thought at that point I would probably go back to the family ranch. Once I ventured away from Canadian Texas, I decided I didn't want to go back. <laughs> so uh, my dad and his brother owned two ranches, uh, two family ranches together. My dad sold his because basically I didn't want to go back to it. I uh, wanted to choose a little more urban area to, to reside and uh, so I did that. Uh, so yeah, I, I was an ag major but I, I was an ag loan officer for a period of about 10 years uh, and that's really my only tie to the ag, you know, ag world that I've had since I went to OSU even though I was an ag major. Well let's talk about how you kind of came to OSU that freshman year. Mm -hmm. Did your parents drop you off? Did you drive? <laughs> I don't remember. It's funny. I do remember. No, I guess my parents didn't bring me. I drove. Uh, I just remember standing in the driveway, you know, typical mom tears in her eyes driving off and, you know, just came to Stillwater. But it was such a fit. I mean, I'd been here so many times before mm -hmm. that it wasn't that foreign. It, you know, it was just, uh, it was an easy transition. And, uh, yeah, it was easy. What were you driving in 1980? I believe I was in a Bronco, a Ford Bronco, <laughs> a brown Ford Bronco, oddly enough. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm kind of a car junkie, too. I've traded cars a lot, so I think I had probably several several cars while I was going to school here. So you, so you come to OSU in 1980, mm -hmm. and where are you living? Uh, I was in a fraternity. I was a Sigma Nu. So, uh, and I, it's odd, I've, I've stayed in touch with several of those guys, and I had a son that graduated from OSU two years ago in December, uh, followed in my footsteps and ended up as a Sigma Nu as well. So when I came back, I came back for his uh, initiation ceremony, which it's kind of a sacred thing. You know, you go down into the basement of the house and nobody else other than members are allowed in there. but. Being a member that I was, I got to go down and pin him, you know, as a new Sigma Nu, which was really kind of a cool thing. But where I was going with that was there were, I think, three, maybe four other dads that I went to school with that had sons at exactly the same time, and they were down there as well. So that was 
that was a really neat moment. I mean, it really was. <laughs> so. so you rushed as a freshman? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, which is typical. I mean, back then, uh, that's all done really. I won't say that it's predetermined. It's not like the girls' rush where everything's decided in that one week. You do summer trips, you do retreats, you do things with the guys, and then you just kind of figure out which house you, know, you belong in. My father was a beta, and my uncle was a beta, uh, so I broke ranks and went over to the Sigma News. But. So freshman year, you're in the house in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Describe the atmosphere for me. <laughs> <laughs> how much do you, oh, I shouldn't say how much do you want to know, I shouldn't ask that. Uh, I what can you tell me? I think me? it's a lot like it is today. I mean, I, th I think certainly today's environment for hazing is not what it used to be. Uh, certainly that went on. I don't think it ever goes on to the extent that people think it does. You, because you hear of the horrible incidents that do happen randomly across the country, and it, and it does happen. But by and large, uh, it's a bonding experience. And I think if you do it right and, you know, I don't, I don't know really what I'm trying to say other than it, it was not that bad of an experience. It, you know, as people, people say, oh, wasn't it horrible? And no, it really wasn't. You, it, you know, you bond with your pledge brothers and you, you just kind of roll with it. And then when you're initiated, it's that much sweeter. You know, what, the good thing that has happened, I think, over the years is people are realizing you don't really have to do that to have, you know, the bonds that you have with your, with your fraternity brothers. So... Uh, I know, you know, my son shared things that went on in the house, it, and it was completely different from when I was there. So that, I think, it's a good thing that that's gone away. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess I'm, I'm more interested in the, um, kind of how different the, the feeling on campus was potentially in the 1980s mm -hmm. versus today. Uh, I, I, the only thing I think that is really radically different is that students today are so glued to their devices that they're, while they are very social, I mean, I, over in the athletic department, we have a lot of interns, so I have, ex, you know, a lot of exposure to students, and uh, they're still very social, you know, it hasn't, uh, it, it just surprises me that everyone is so just so glued to their devices that's not a that's a the only way I can put it you know everyone wants an immediate answer and you feel like you have to text someone back immediately when they you know so that's that's a little bit different but I think OSU people just kind of share a special bond it really is a family atmosphere and I know that it seems so overused I know in the athletic department we use it continuously come here it's just like family but it it really is you know I think that OSU does a really nice job of making everybody feel a part of things, and I don't know if other other campuses excel like that as we do. I, my feeling is they really don't, because that's just a theme that comes up over and over and over with anybody that went here. And I think that's also because we, uh, we're a little bit more of an isolated location, you don't go home as much. You know, you can't run home all the time, typically, if you're from Oklahoma City or Tulsa or Dallas or Houston, where all of our, you know, a big part of our students are. So you're here together. You're kind of all in this mess together here in Stillwater, and it, it creates a really nice atmosphere, I think. Do you remember your house mother? I do. Uh, her name was Mom Simon. A lot of guys will remember her because she lived to be 100, 100 or 101. I'll probably get in trouble for saying this. I mean, I thought she was really old when I was there, and then she only died just a few years ago. Oh, my so, goodness. So, uh, yeah, I guess she was in her 70s when we were, you know, in the house. That is one thing that's very different. She was uh, pretty much totally a figurehead when we were there. We escorted her to dinner. We escorted her back. Uh, the house mother that was there when my son was there was, had a much more interactive relationship with mm -hmm. the house mother. I mean, she kind of was a disciplinarian to an extent. I mean, she paid attention to what was going on. Our house mom was more of, you know, we didn't see her that often. We saw her at dinner time. And uh, uh, she was a really neat lady. We all really liked her, uh, but it was very different. I mean, the one that Michael had when he was in school here, much younger and just more a part of things, you know, so. Uh. Kind of describe your, 
your room in the Sigma New House? Oh boy, well, we moved semester by semester, which is different. We moved all the time. So you could choose a four-man room, uh, you could choose a five-man room, we had two-man rooms. Uh, we had common showers, uh, but uh, boy, every configuration of room you can imagine. And, and, and all the guys just kind of got together and you figured out what you wanted to do with your room, where you wanted to put your bunk beds, where did you know. Uh, now they've gone to more of a suite, suite style format of the rooms, you know, where you kind of have suite mates. And I think, I can't really remember from going in there when Michael was there, I think maybe they have separate bathrooms now, I think, for the suites. I can't remember, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was it was neat. It was a neat atmosphere. You kind of tried to pair up with guys that you had a lot in common with, obviously, but also that maybe shared your same study habits and party habits and, and all that. But we also had these, one thing that they don't have now that we had back then was there was a rack room in the Sigma New House. That's what we called it. A very large, dark, cool room where you could always go to sleep you were guaranteed that it was going to be quiet and that was sort of a sacred space that everybody everybody adhered to not making noise in there to sleeping that's where you could go when you needed to get sleep so that was that was nice hmm. I'm, I'm guessing homecoming was a big part of your collegiate experience it was of course I mean for Greek for the Greeks Absolutely. You know, that's always, that's always the, the biggest thing ever but yeah, you know, you stay up all night pumping. It, that's one thing that really hasn't changed. That that really, I don't think, has changed at all. The house decks these days are way more elaborate than what we created, and you know, they have uh, ways of recreating photos. I mean, we the way we did it was just kind of ran. You picked a design and you kind of went with it. But now, you know, you you patterned it after a photo that was you know a specific photo, and you can actually recognize people in the pomping now, you know, it's amazing what, what they can do, but the principles are still the same. You work night after night after night after night, long hours and, and, and that. So it was, it was neat. It's a good, it was a good time. So when you were a student and you wanted to, to hang out with friends off campus mm -hmm. or go party off campus, would you go to a specific place or different places? Well, back then, as I recall, the drinking age changed while I was at OSU. Uh, it was 18 when I started, and I believe 18 for the first couple of years. You would think I would remember that. But I remember the bars being a much more integral part of our lives than they are today. And our kids, like when my son went through, they always had their parties off campus at a house. You know, They were very careful to have designated drivers, which I think is awesome. That seems to have really taken hold here and, you know, cut down on the drinking and driving but when I was here we walked we walked to the bars we walked to the Gray Fox Inn typically which is where Cowboy Book I believe is now right there near Eskimo Joe's so we didn't really go off campus for socializing that much maybe off campus a little bit but typically to a bar or a you know restaurant that was nearby so, so what were some of the places y'all would frequent oh gosh well I already mentioned one of them the Gray Fox Inn is the one that always comes to mind Eskimo Joe's back in the day when I was here was a dive bar. I mean, it really had a rickety old staircase. I mean, a lot of people will remember it, but it uh, it was nothing special. It was fun, but it, it's not, it wasn't the grand show place that it is today. Uh, all the places on the Strip, too. I spent a lot of time at the Coney. The Sigma New House was right across from Coney Island, so I, I don't even like hot dogs now, and I think that's why, really, because I ate so many of those stupid conies, two or three a night kind of thing. I mean, we would go there most nights and eat, you know, like at 10 or 11, and hence the freshman 30 or whatever it was. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it was a good time. The, the strip is largely unchanged. I mean, the bar's names have changed. I mean, some of them, I guess, are still the same, but, yeah, that that part of OSU really has not changed, or that part of Stillwater really hasn't changed. What's really nice about Stillwater now is an older person coming back is that there are a number of adult venues that are adult appropriate, and I, I think Stillwater was missing that. Downtown, you know, you have Louie's, you have Brooklyn's, you have Zanotti's Wine Bar, some nicer places for us old folks. So that's, Stillwater has become such a nice, nice place to live. So while you were in school, mm -hmm. you were studying? Ag economics. Okay. Yeah. And let's talk about some of the buildings you remember having classes in. Yep, uh, that's easy. I was a Sigma Nu, and I had to walk to Ag Hall. So I, like, had the longest walk of anybody on campus. So I, I made that walk. And all, nearly all of my classes, you know, at least 
in the last three years of my school here were seemed like they were always in Ag Hall. So I had a long walk. And now, I mean, campus is built beyond Ag Hall. I mean, there, I guess there were maybe a building or two past Ag Hall when I was in school here. But yeah, that's what I remember uh, was Ag Hall. Hmm. Okay. Memorable professors that stand out in your mind. Oh gosh, I should have known you were going to ask me that. Uh, my advisor and also one of my professors was Dr. Franzman, and I guess he's the one I remember the most because I, I was maybe an odd duck in that I really liked economics, and I took a lot of economics classes that were outside of agricultural economics as well. And he, uh, as one of my professors, I just thought he was really good. He had a way of explaining things to you that you just got. And I, at that point, was thinking I would be going back to, to the ranch, you know. So he put things in a practical application that said, you know, if, hey, if you're doing this, here's why you need to figure out this. You know, he, he, he had a good job of make, making the correlation. So uh, he's probably the most memorable one that I had. I guess. Hmm. Okay. Did you have a job while you were a student? I did not. I was lucky enough not to, not to have to work, so I... I had a really nice time while I was here. I know one semester I had my, all of my classes on Tuesday, Thursday, so I could have a four-day weekend. And not, you usually don't have that choice because the classes aren't offered in that manner. So one time it just worked out. So I had, you know, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off, which was nice. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought it was pretty smart. I think I had some of my worst grades that semester, actually, even though I had, you know, four days in between classes to study them. Outside of your your involvement with the Sigma News, were you involved with any other campus organizations? Uh, no, we did a fair amount of volunteering, and I think the Greek community is still really good about that. Uh, did some volunteer stuff, uh, not so much campus organizations. I'm sure I I did did some. I'm not really recalling anything uh, anything specific, but m mostly Greek stuff, intramurals, uh, you know, all the stuff that we that we Greeks did uh, was pretty much it. Well, without divulging any secrets mm -hmm. or incriminating anybody, when you're getting together with your buddies, the stories you tell... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there have been some funny ones. I mean, one of the things that I... And I think it's kind of common knowledge, so you're not putting an idea in anybody's head. Uh, the underground tunnels here at OSU, I mean, I'm sure that it's come up in a lot of conversations, but... You know, after going out and having a good time at night, I can remember several occasions going down in the tunnels, and you can really go anywhere underneath OSU. I mean, uh, the tunnels lead everywhere, and you can come up in a building, you can come up in Gallagher Ive Arena. You can, I mean, there's, uh, it's an interesting, interesting. Where, where would you normally jump in? I, I don't really remember. It seems like, it seems like somewhere over off Hester is where we would go in. I don't only did that maybe two or three times. And, and I've heard worse stories than what we did. We never went into a building that we weren't supposed to be in, or a space that we weren't supposed to be in. I've heard of people going into you know places where they shouldn't be. Uh, and of course, now I think there's a lot more cameras all over the place than there used to be. I mean, back then, you know, we had, it seems like we had rain in the place and nobody ever got in trouble for doing it. But everybody knew what was going on. I mean, you would go down there, you might even run into somebody, somebody else that, did, uh, that was doing it late at night. It was just, some kind of odd, cool thing to do, I guess. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that still goes on or not. I I know when my son was in the Sigma New House a few years back, it still went on. So. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. We don't hear too much of it in interviews from our you know fifties and sixties grads. I've only been hearing it lately. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely went on back in the day. <laughs> Absolutely went on back in the day. And they were lit. I mean, you you know, some of the tunnels were, I remember standing up and walking in the tunnels, you know, so there, it's not like you're on hands and knees trying to crawl through dirt space. They were concrete and I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> nice space. <laughs> Other hijinks? <laughs> uh, you know, I, of course, the sirloin, sirloin stockade, steer in the Theta Pond, that's the one everybody's heard of. Streaker's Knot, of course, used to be a big thing. Streaker's Knot kind of made it, uh, I think it was at its high point maybe in the late 70s, mm -hmm. right before I was here. Not so much a big deal in the early 80s. It seemed like it was being phased out at that time. 
So everybody knew the date, and it might still happen on a really small scale, but I think that was maybe before I got here. Uh, tailgate, the tailgating scene has grown astronomically here in Stillwater, which is really cool. We didn't really have that big of a, big of a tailgating scene back in the day. I um, mean, yeah, a little bit of it went on, but certainly not to the scale it does today. Um, I can also remember the availability of football tickets. You know, it was easy to get tickets back then. And when I was here, we were, you know, the that period that ended with 1984, you know, prior to Barry Sanders, but we still had, you know, some greats that were here in the early 80s, had good football teams, but it was still pretty easy to come up with tickets. You know, today that's a little tougher. Uh, tougher to do, but we always had, you know, a bunch of them sitting on the table at the Sigma New House, so I remember anybody that wanted to go to a game, you just walked by and grabbed your ticket and went. That's, those days are gone. And Lewis Field was a lot different then. Oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely. Tell us what it was like. Uh, it was just like an overgrown high school stadium, really. I mean, it was big. As a, as a kid coming from Canadian, Texas, a, you know, a 2A school, uh, I thought it was just the coolest thing ever, but, uh, you know, certainly have a lot of good memories of it, but boy, it was it was needing some updating, and of course Boone Pickens gave us that. So uh, you know, it's just a beautiful place now. I look at it and still am, am awe of it. You know, so I got to see it make the transition, as did a lot of people. But it was yeah, really just like a high school stadium. I mean, you could go under the bleachers. You, you know, it was uh, yeah, it's way different. Hmm. Would you attend any basketball? Uh, some, not as much as football. Mm -hmm. uh, we would, you know, that was just kind of part of our fall routine. I think basketball is a little tougher because a lot of the games are during the week, school nights. And with them, you know, a lot of the games wouldn't get over until, you know, 10 or 11 at night. And if you're driving three hours, it's just hard. I can remember coming to a few games, mm -hmm. uh, big ones, you know, maybe Kansas. But typically not a lot of basketball games. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, you're getting close to graduation, it's crunch time, mm -hmm. any idea of, of what you're going to do? Yeah, I did. I actually did uh, two summer internships with a company in Fort Worth called National Finance Credit Corporation. <clears throat> they, were, uh, they were the finance subsidiary of Texas Livestock Marketing Association. So I did, uh, like I said, a couple of summer internships with them, and before I graduated, they offered me a job. Uh, and oddly enough, I didn't take the job. I actually went to work for First National Bank of Amarillo because it was closer to home and worked there for a couple of years. That was right as the price of oil was crashing. I mean, a lot of Oklahomans in Texas remember that. So uh, I survived, I think, the first three rounds of layoffs at the, at the bank there in Amarillo and then didn't survive the last round and uh, called the folks in Fort Worth and said, hey, I'm available now. They took me and so... Uh, Anyway, I went to work for Texas Livestock Marketing and National Finance Credit Corporation in Fort Worth, which was an ag, you know, totally an ag lending institution. Uh, big, bigger loans, usually three to four hundred thousand and up. Operating lines of credit for ranches. So, uh, with my ranching background, uh, it was it was a perfect fit for me. Hmm. Well, it was good that you had that experience prior to graduating. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, you know, they were just really nice folks and. Uh, I kind of felt at home there because uh, it was my people, you know, ranchers, and uh, I, I enjoyed, enjoyed my time there a lot. Before we, we jump further into your career, um, what was graduation like? You know, I was a December graduate, wow. and I didn't walk. Okay. I probably shouldn't admit that, but my parents didn't feel that strongly about me walking, which is odd because we're an OSU family and every, you know, so we're all about OSU. And I just, I, I'm sure if I had graduated in May, I probably would have walked. But mm -hmm. really, back then, a whole bunch of us didn't. Most of us didn't walk. I mean, I know they allowed you the option, I think, to do that in December. But I, since I started working immediately after school, I didn't come back in May, you know, mm -hmm. to actually walk across the stage. So I didn't. I mean, I graduated, but I didn't didn't put on the cap and gown. So. Hmm. All right, so after your work in the banking industry, mm -hmm. in the mortgage industry, mm -hmm. kind of take me through the progression. Oh, boy, I haven't done this in a long time, so I'll have to think about it. Uh, yeah, after I decided to leave, uh, leave the banking world, my dad and I, my dad was in Austin, uh, and he had, once he was done with his political career, 
I, he and I went into business together and we owned uh, several businesses in Austin. We owned a, a video production company which was at the time in Chapter 13 bankruptcy, Chapter 13 or Chapter 11, I can't remember which. But anyway, uh, in bankruptcy, we purchased it out of bankruptcy, uh, kind of got it back on its feet, recapitalized it, and operated it for, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years, something like that, and then sold it. Turned around, bought another business that was kind of in the same dire straits, uh, called Database Marketing Group, uh, got it back on its feet, and now it, it's still there. It's it's in a company called Invenio Marketing in Austin, and uh I kept a small piece of that, so you know maybe someday it'll actually pay for my retirement. We'll see, but it's uh, I think they're up to maybe 700 employees now, so it's a good good size company, uh, and that I guess takes me through my time there in Austin. I actually also worked for a company, an archaeologist. I decided I wanted to do something fun, so I left the day-to-day -day operation of database marketing group and went to work for a <clears throat> for an archaeology archaeological consulting company, which was really interesting. It was fun. I kind of had an interest in archaeology anyway, and it was a fun group of people. So I actually stayed there for about 10 years. My hmm. last 10 years in Austin was spent doing that. So I was the financial guy. I was the CFO. But I would go out on digs occasionally, and they would let me, you know, let me go do stuff. And it, I also had a, a big interest in photography, so I did a little bit of the photography there on site at Database Marketing Group, uh, which sort of led me to my time here in Stillwater and uh, what, what came next? What year did you return to Stillwater? Uh, I bought uh, 44 acres of property in 2007 in Noble County, uh, north of Stillwater, with the intent of retiring here. I really didn't plan to be here so soon. Uh, like I said, I bought it in 07 thinking that I would uh, retire and move here when I was 52. That was kind of my plan. I'm only 53 now, and I say only 53, but I'm 53 now, and I've been in Stillwater now for five years. So I actually did it, you know, at late, late 40s or, or about that time frame, ended up, had the property for a good while, and I uh, kind of into the RVing scene, so have a motorhome. So would always bring the motorhome up for football games and such, and use that property as a place, a place to park it, have RV pads and electrical sewer, uh, water there uh, and then ended up building a house uh, in 2011 so I guess really as a full-time Stillwater resident that started in 2011 hmm. so four years now so that I've been here full-time in Stillwater so. and kind of tell me how you became involved with the athletics program here well other than being a fan uh, which has been forever I did some freelance photography for a guy named Brody Schmidt uh, who has been shooting for Oklahoma State Athletics for quite some time uh, as a, also a freelancer. And anyway, shot for him for about a year, shot a couple of seasons worth of football. When I was actually still in Austin, uh, was making the trip back and forth. We came up here every weekend for football and basketball. I burned a lot of, burned a lot of miles doing that, but shot for Brody. And that sort of led to... Uh, I got to know a lot of the people in the athletics department. Uh, my buddy Kyle Ray, who is uh, in charge of enrollment management and marketing for OSU, is also a good friend, and he suggested that I apply for a job in university marketing. So I went to work for them for about a year. That was in 2011, I guess. I have to get my year straight. But anyway, went to work for them. Stayed about a year and a half, but I was also shooting sports on the side for them. Uh, any chance I could get out of the office and go shoot, I would, even if it was a baseball game that was during the week, during the day, or whatever. I would try to try to sneak out and shoot it. Anyway, that led to uh, a good relationship with the folks in athletics. Uh, they, at some point, decided that they wanted to hire a full-time photographer, so here I am. So I guess I'm going into my fifth season shooting for the athletic department, but as a full-time athletics employee, I guess this will be my third year. Hmm. Uh, it's fun. I get to travel with the team. Uh, so we'll be heading to Central Michigan a week from right about now. Actually, I think we're leaving a little bit after noon uh, next Thursday, next Wednesday, next Wednesday uh, for our season opener uh, at Central Michigan. But uh, for an OSU sports junkie, there couldn't be a better job on the planet. I, I shoot all 16 sports for OSU athletics. So a lot of a lot of hours, a lot of uh, you know extra extra time, 
put in, but it's it's fun. I mean, I, I get to be there as a fan. I can't imagine having this job not being an OSU fan because it's pretty grueling, the schedule that we have to keep. Uh, if you're not actually into the sport and not enjoying watching the athletes and really pulling for OSU, I don't think the job would be near as exciting as it is to me. All 16? Yep. Believe it or not. I believe there's 16. I haven't counted in a long time, but it's, you know, we'll it once you know. I mean, we have equestrian. We have a lot of, you know, a lot of the Olympic sports, you mm -hmm. got you, know, you got wrestling, men's and women's basketball, football, uh, you know, the list, softball, baseball. Uh, so there's, I believe there's 16. I can't really count 16, but uh, someone threw out that number. But it's, it's in the teens. You know, it's a large number of sports and a large number of events. Now, it's, it's pretty challenging shooting, especially action shots. Mm -hmm. so, so what are you, how are you mm -hmm. trying to... What types of shots are you trying to compose? Well, uh, it varies. I mean, we, we shoot a variety. We, we need fan shots. You know, we need those pretty, you know, the beautiful marketing shots of a full stadium mm -hmm. on a beautiful day, people having fun, the, the band, the cheerleaders, the Palm Squad, you know, all the people that are there. Uh, so you shoot, you shoot a, just a huge variety of shots, wide shots, uh, close-up shots. Uh, the action shots is what I'm primarily there for. You know, there are other photographers here that, that kind of do what I do, but really the athletic department wants the action stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they want their athletes, they want them showcased, they want to use those for marketing materials later on, they want to use them in the media guide, on the website. So that's primarily why I'm there. Uh, you know, technology's made it so much easier, you know, uh, to be a photographer. I, you know, I can't imagine the guys back in the day that had to, you know, they were limited to, you know, 24 or 36 exposures and, uh, the inability to shoot in low light, all of those things. So I look back at the older photos and I'm in awe of what they've done compared, you know, we have it pretty easy, you know, these days as, as to what we're shooting. You know, getting that shot is a lot easier today than it used to be. So on average, say for a football game, mm -hmm. how many photos are you taking? Uh, I usually end up with 12 to 1400 mm -hmm. shots. Uh, that would include the walk, that would include pregame. Uh, and some post game, not a lot, but uh, you know, I would say 800 to 900 shots of the game itself, and then the ancillary stuff, you know, three or 400 shots. Uh, if there are any special events, uh, football has become such a spectacle these days. There's usually something going on over there on the north side of the stadium. You know, they'll have a guy motorcycle jumping, or you know, the, the shopping and all the fan interaction stuff is always over there. They might have the Heisman House over there. So there's always a lot to shoot. And if you don't shoot something, inevitably someone will ask for it. So I try to be everywhere I can on game day you know, to, to take care of that. So on a typical football game day, mm -hmm. kind of walk me through your schedule. Uh, my schedule is easier than the video guys, really, because I, I'm kind of a one-man show. I'm the only photographer that works for OSU. There's certainly a lot of other photographers that go. The guys over in university marketing typically shoot football, as do I. But... Uh, I get there maybe three hours ahead of game time, uh, walk around, try to get some tailgating shots. You don't want to get out there too early because you just you kind of lose the atmosphere. So you sort of have to ramp up at the same time the crowd does. Uh, get out there and you know shoot some tailgating shots. I always shoot the walk, try to shoot it from every angle imaginable. I've stood on top of those flower pots at the end of Hester or you know balancing up there trying to get an aerial shot of the walk. I've gone up, you know, certainly on the rooftop, do a fair amount of rooftop shooting from the top of the stadium. Uh, and then I try to shoot pregame. A lot of times the, the players that aren't starters really will only be dressed in full pads and jersey, you know, the whole, the whole get up uh, during the pregame. And so I shoot all the pregame, and I usually shoot that pretty heavily to get players that, that might not see on the field action, you know, guys that are walk-ons, you know, and... You know, those guys that give it their all but aren't necessarily the starters, you, you know, I enjoy shooting them. And when it comes time for them to graduate or leave the program, we inevitably always need photos. So, you know, it's not just the stars that we shoot. We try to get shots of everybody because at some point you'll need them. Hmm. But that's, my, that's my typical day. Uh, I usually finish, you know, finish... It's at the end of the day where all the really the work comes in. You know, you shoot 1,200 photos, but you got to go through them. So, it's typically three or four hours after the game that you spend in your office. So, 
those uh, eight o'clock games are painful. You know, that end at eleven or eleven thirty, and then you're there till two or three in the morning working up photos. But it's today. That's one thing that really has changed is everybody's need or want for immediate gratification. So you really feel like you need to work those up pretty much immediately. This year, I'll be carrying an iPad onto the field. I'll be broadcasting photos straight from my camera, you know, to my iPad, and then emailing them uh, to our social media folks, uh, you know, for immediate distribution. So we'll have stuff out on, you know, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Flickr. We'll have all that stuff out there pretty much immediately after it happens. You know, if a big, if a big play gets made, we'll be tweeting photos within five five or ten minutes of it happening. Hmm. So that's that's something different. Wow. Usually, you know, in the old days when I was growing up, you got up the next morning and you looked at the Sunday paper. <laughs> so, but now it's, you know, you don't do that. You get, you get, get it immediately. So. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, outside of football, what are some of your favorite sports? I know you're a fan. What are your favorite sports to shoot? Uh, yeah, I, football certainly, because just because I grew up coming, you know, coming to OSU football, I'm just such a huge fan. I've really grown to like baseball a lot. I I enjoy it. I like the team. I like the players. You know, Josh Holiday. Wow, what an incredible coach and, and and guy. I mean, the staff here in athletics is just awesome. They they really are nice. And I always, you know, like to say to people, I probably know more people <clears throat> in the athletic department than anyone other than Coach Holder, the athletic director, because I have exposure to every single department. You know. The guys in Orange Power Studios that do all the video stuff and myself, I mean, we are just constantly around those guys because we cover all the sports. If you work for a specific sport, you're kind of in your little cocoon. You know, the football guys don't see a lot of what everybody else does, so we get to make the rounds, and that's fun. That's fun for me because I, you get to know everybody, but uh, you asked me about what my favorite thing is to shoot or I got sidetracked, but I really like baseball. I like cross country. I, I enjoy shooting those guys, and they're they're a lot of fun to travel with. I've gone to Terre Haute, Indiana, with them on several trips now, and they're they're neat kids. They're just really a pleasure to hang out with. Uh, I I don't know that I could pick a favorite other than football. I just love football, but I enjoy shooting all the sports. I really do. I'm not just saying that. You know, it's like I'm just you know I I just enjoy what I do. So it's hard to really pinpoint other than football what I really do like. So. You kind of have a dream job oh, at do. OSU. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, I I do, and I you know it's funny. You you don't do it to get rich, certainly, uh, but it's just a lot of fun. I what really propelled me to come up here is when I was living in Austin, had several friends who either had lost kids or lost spouses, you know, at a pretty early age, and I and I'd all always wanted to come up here and move to Stillwater and and kind of do something, you know, really off the wall and crazy. So that's what propelled me to do it early. I just saw, I thought, you know, I may never get there. I may still be, you know, I may be 70 years old, still sitting in Austin and Austin and not having done what I've done. And I haven't regretted it for a second. I, you know, I absolutely love Stillwater and I love working for athletics. So it is a dream job. And it's, when I lived in Austin, I was so focused on retirement. You know, it's like, when am I going to get to that age where I can move up there? Now I have no desire to retire, which is it's it's comfort. It's really pretty comforting because when you're when you're younger, you're so focused on that. You know, everybody tells you build for retirement, save your money. You know, you don't want to do this forever. Well, I, I found a job that I would like to do forever. So as long as they'll let me haul a camera around, I'm going to be out there. You know, so <laughs> uh, it's a really fun job. Like I said, you won't get rich doing it, but if you love doing it, I I don't feel like I'm coming to work every day at all. I mean, despite the long hours and crazy travel schedule and all that stuff. It's just a lot of fun. You know, sometimes I can't believe I'm getting paid to do it. So. Memorable moments? Uh, in sports? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, gosh. Well, the Bedlam victory in 2011 over OU, 44 to 10. That's forever etched in my mind. Because growing up, I mean, coming here, we know our football history. Good Lord, I saw some horrible games, you know. And you just dreaded, you dreaded those trips over here when we were playing Nebraska or OU. It just, ugh, you know. And now, I mean, we've beaten Nebraska badly several times. We pounded OU, uh, and even when we lose to OU, we're competitive now. I mean, there's you know, gone are the days when you expect to be beaten by OU. So uh, that 44 to 10 game really was, you know, the high point. And the Fiesta Bowl that followed it. I mean, that was my first season to shoot for OSU. Was the Fiesta Bowl season? So what a you know what a way to start. 
but that was ex- that was memorable too. It was just it, w- it was like a whirlwind, but it was kind of like a dream as well. You know, I couldn't believe I'm you know out here in Arizona shooting the festival and watching my team do this. You know, so that was great. And of course, the game itself. You know, going into overtime and then winning with a field goal kick doesn't get doesn't get much better than that. So hmm. Those were. Those were pretty memorable. And last year's Bedlam game, you know, when we we took them to overtime and beat them in Norman, that that was a heck of a lot of fun too. So, yeah. And there's been some fun, you know, baseball's returning. You know, it's back to prominence now. When I was in school here, baseball was dominant. I mean, we we won the Big 12 or the Big 8 every single year. Uh, so it's really, it's been fun watching them come back too. So that's been a high point because I love baseball and I like following the team. So watching them come back has been fun. <laughs> I'm sure the best is yet to come. Yeah, I think so. I mean, OSU Athletics really, I mean, as far as an overall athletic department, it, they really are outstanding. I mean, all of our sports are competitive. I mean, that's, uh, some sports seem to, or some schools, I think that a lot of larger schools, just give it all up for football. I mean, you just sacrifice all your other sports. OSU has a really well-rounded athletic department, and I don't, I think a lot of people do realize that, but... I think maybe we need to do a better job of getting the word out that, hey, uh, all of our sports are fun to follow and we're competitive, you know, in pretty much everything we do. So mm-hmm. that's, that's what makes it a fun job. <laughs> well, you own property in Morrison. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> there's not much. That won't take long. <laughs> there's a bank, there's a post office, and there's Morrison Cafe. Uh, I'm a regular at Morrison Cafe. I went there last night, as a matter of fact. Uh, So there's, you know, it's just typical small town. I live about five miles, four or five miles southwest of Morrison, right on the Payne Noble County line, basically. You could throw a rock into Payne County from my place. So I don't spend a lot of time in Morrison other than going to the Morrison Cafe and eating, and I renew my, there's a tag agency there, so I renew my, you know, renew my farm tags (laughs) in Morrison. But but that's about it. You know, I head into Stillwater, and I live right off 177, so it's it's really easy to get into Stillwater. And with all the growth in Stillwater, Perkins Road basically dead ends about where I live. I'm just a quarter mile past where Perkins Road dead ends. So I can just hop on Perkins Road and come right into town, and, you know, that's where Stillwater's growth is. So all the restaurants and shopping is out on that end of town. So that's that's pretty nice. I can, I can get there in 10 minutes. So. Why did you choose that that piece of land? Just because it was beautiful. I I had given a realtor uh, instructions when we were coming up for a football game uh, that I wanted to see a whole bunch of different pieces of property. And the second one we went to, I knew that was it. So it was just a beautiful place. You pull in, there's a pretty large pond. Uh, It was just pretty. There's a couple of creeks that run across the property. And I said, this is the one, so let's call the guy and make an offer. And... Uh, he accepted the offer and the rest is history. Hmm. In your, in the nomination that, that came to us, mm-hmm. um, and if you want to talk about it, it's fine. If you don't, that's fine. It, mm-hmm. it mentioned that a, a family tragedy brought mm-hmm. you to Stillwater. Yeah, I don't know that it brought me uh, to Stillwater as much as it did, uh, yeah, I don't know that it really brought me to Stillwater. It it, uh, it definitely tied me back to OSU and made me feel connected. I had a uh, my first cousin, whose name was Tracy Waterfield. Uh, she she was also went went to school here and was in the Pi Phi sorority, and uh, she's been in the news a lot lately. So I think a lot of people probably know who she is, but it's a murder that's never been solved. She met her future husband here, who was a Sigma Nu. Sounds all, <laughs> all ties together, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, and, and she was brutally murdered in Moore. Uh, after she met Jeff, uh, he graduated from OSU. That was her, her husband. They moved to Moore uh, because he graduated from OSU, but at the time, OSU didn't have a medical school, so he went to uh, OU Medical School, so they moved moved down there. And on her 21st birthday, she was found brutally murdered. And uh, they, to this day, they've never never solved the crime, and it's been, gosh, however many years, you know, 30-something years. It happened in 1981. So uh, that was a really traumatic time for our, our whole family. Her younger sister uh, and I graduated together uh, in Canadian and 
she came here and was also a pie pie. And uh, so we all, you know, we all got through it and just kind of, kind of plow through it. But it's uh, definitely brought our family closer together. And uh, she, you know, she was an OSU girl, so a lot, you know, every, even to this day, I have a lot of people come up to me and remember Tracy fondly, and just, just was a really neat person. Who died much too soon. Hmm. We have, uh, we set up a, the family set up a scholarship in her honor. When Boone Pickens did the Pick Pickens Legacy Scholarship match, we all got together and made a donation, and so we do have a scholarship in her honor, which is neat within the College of Education. And uh, you know, at some point, uh, that scholarship value will triple because of the Pickens match, what, which was a really neat thing Boone Pickens did. I mean, I, you can't say enough time that you know you can put up put up money and it'll be worth three times what you put up uh, at some point in the future. So it's a good scholarship now. It'll be a, even better scholarship someday, but uh, that that is a really neat gift. So we decided to honor her in that manner, and I know she would be proud because she was a proud OSU girl. So. Hmm. Uh, anyway, well, looking back on your career, mm -hmm. um, how did attending OSU and earning your degree here impact your life? Well, in a huge way right now, because I, I wouldn't have this job in the athletic department, <laughs> which is the most important, <laughs> important thing to me right now. But just getting the degree, I mean, I, I, like I said, I did for the first, you know, eight or ten years of my career use my ag degree, so I was an ag loan officer. And, you know, just from the sim, simple point where, the, you know, applying for the jobs required a bachelor's degree, uh, you know, it, it's just something I've had for life. I mean, all the people I've met here, I mean, it just OSU's always been a huge part of my life. But as far as getting a job, just the simple matter of the fact of having a degree has helped me land a job. Uh, but more importantly, the people I've met, the people I've connected with here. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people have said, you know, what are you crazy? You know, Austin has a reputation of being a really cool town. And said, what are you doing moving from Austin, Texas to Stillwater, Oklahoma? What do you, you know, because I, I loved Austin too. But I have just not regretted it for a single second. I've, I've always felt a part of Stillwater, and uh, I've, I'm supposed to be talking about Noble County, I think, instead of Payne County, right? But I <laughs> uh, just love the people here, and it's one thing that I didn't realize when I was going to college here at all. Uh, and I guess we're so self-absorbed in our school and all the things that you know that school is about. What a great community Stillwater is. It's just a nice place to live. The people are just unbelievably friendly. And I, that's one thing I really noticed even coming from Texas. You know, Texans claim to be the friendliest people on earth, but such a notable difference in people in Austin, not that they were rude, but we would come up here and you might walk in the convenience store to get something to drink and 15 minutes later you're still talking to the clerk. You, you just don't find that there, you know. So I, I just, I really like being in Stillwater. And I, my photography career started with being a storm chaser. I love the weather. And so that's why, that was one of the draws to Stillwater was the crazy weather that we have here. And so that was another reason that I loved being in Stillwater because, you know, the weather is just a little more exciting here, more to, more to shoot. So. Storm chasing? Yeah. Yeah, I love storm chasing. Do you really? Yeah, I, my job has kind of gotten in the way of that lately because it seems like every time we have a good chase day there's always something going on you know I either need to sh you know there's something to shoot <laughs> in athletics but I try to plan I try to plan a little bit if I can watch the forecast like eight or ten days ahead of time and they're forecasting a period of really stormy weather I try to schedule my photography stuff <laughs> around it. <laughs> Do you remember the first big storm you saw? Uh, not gosh there are so many I about five Oh gosh, I wasn't living in Stillwater yet, but about five or six years ago, there was a really large wedge tornado on the ground just west of uh, Hennessy, and I was out shooting that day, and actually I was with a chase team, and uh, got some really neat shots of a, of a big wedge tornado on the ground, which was, that's probably my most memorable storm, but I, I've always been into landscape photography, so if it was a good, you know, a good thunderstorm day, or it was evening close to sunset, I would just head out with the camera, so there have been so many storms I don't really have one in particular other than that one that sticks out in my mind. So we were out chasing the day of that El Reno tornado where a couple of the storm chasers were killed. Uh, that's really the only time I've ever been scared when I was out because we, you, so many of us storm chasers were on the wrong side of that storm. I mean, it, you know, it was heading east, northeast, and then all of a sudden headed southeast. A lot of us were on the south side of that storm and just in a really bad place. So that, that was 
pretty scary. But other than that, that I guess that is a very memorable storm, actually, now that I think about it. But I uh, didn't really get any great photos, but uh, was scared. <laughs> You've, you've kind of, you know, from a very early age, had this connection to OSU. Mm -hmm. um, you have strong family ties to the university. Right. Um, what do you think sparks such loyalty in OSU alumni? Uh, it's so many things. I mean, part of it's the experience that we all have here. I mean, we just, it's just so much fun here. You know, I... Every, I think there's always a bit of trepidation coming out of high school, especially someone coming from a small house school like we did, that, you know, it's going to be overwhelming. OSU is just a really comfortable place to be. I mean, making that transition from high school to college was just a pleasure because from the moment you step on, camp, step on campus, you feel welcome. So that once you're sucked into that, it just becomes a part of you. I don't really know how to explain other than it just feels it just feels right when you're here uh, people are are so welcoming and friendly uh, but I mean I guess perhaps a bit of its brainwashing too you know when I was little my parents were all about OSU you know we donned the OSU gear and we came over here so but my parents were very open-minded I mean they didn't say you had to go to OSU or we're not gonna pay for your school I mean I've heard of, of that happening you know but uh, so yeah, no, I, I don't know how to explain it other than it's just kind of a feeling more than it is something you can put your finger on. It's just a, just a great place to be. Advice to students, what would you tell them? That, that's hard. As you get older, that really is something that I, I say follow your passion. I mean, I, I won't say that I had the wrong jobs prior to the one I have now, but it, I never had a job that I was so passionate about as I am now. And just don't make it all about the money. I mean, I, I really can't say it any more simple than that. I mean, I would choose the job I have right now over, over a six-figure job just because I'm having so much fun. And I don't, I, you know, I, I may not be able to afford to do some of the things that I, you know, could if I were making a lot more money, but I, every day is like a reward. I mean, it's just, you know, follow your passion. I know that's cliche, but but really do. Life is too short. I mean, I've watched too many people die young or too many people that retired, you know, at age 60 or 65 and drop dead two years later. Gosh, follow what, you know, do what you love to do. And then every day is, you know, every day is like vacation. <laughs> you mentioned your son earlier. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your immediate family. Well, right now all that's left, uh, I don't know how much detail you want me to go into. I have a partner here in Stillwater uh, who uh, is absolutely sucked into the whole OSU experience. He works over in the College of Education uh, and uh, has become a, you know, grew up on the East Coast in Maryland actually. And so I don't think he ever envisioned being in Stillwater, Oklahoma, you know, for, his <laughs> for the rest of his life, but absolutely loves it here as do I. Uh, I mentioned my mom earlier. She'll be moving to Stillwater at the end of this week. Uh, my father is now deceased. So we have a pretty small immediate family. Uh, just my sister and myself uh, in our immediate family, mom, sister, and myself. Uh, my uncle, who was also a, a huge OSU fan, uh, just passed away about three weeks ago in Canadian, Texas. He was 81. Uh, all the rest of that side of the family is still in Canadian but yeah, we have a, have a pretty small family. And then there's the Kentucky side of the family as well. Uh, that's my mom's side of the family. But, uh, you know, as, as far as that goes, that's about it. And has your son graduated? Yes, he, gra he, he has gone to work for Marathon Oil. He lives in Houston and uh, graduated in, the years go by so quickly, I guess December of 2013. So he's mm -hmm. been with Marathon going on on two years so far as surviving the crash in oil prices and is, is still has a job. So I don't want him to boomerang home. So <laughs> I love him to death, but uh, yeah, I like him making his own living. <laughs> well, as we, we kind of wind on down, um, is there anything you'd like to mention that we haven't talked about today? Uh, I don't think so. I think we've, we've covered just about everything. Uh, I guess as we end everything in OSU athletics, go Pokes. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll, we'll look forward to seeing your, your images from football 
and all the other sports. Yeah, next Thursday they will start we'll start rolling off the press. So yeah, sounds great. So, yeah. Bruce, thank you so much for joining us as part of uh, our Cowboys in Every County project, mm -hmm. uh, representing the big town of Morris in Oklahoma, yeah. Noble County. Noble County. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thanks.